Hi, my name is Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that have maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I've had a car that lasts over 400,000 miles. The current car that I'm driving has over 220,000 miles on it. It's a 95 model. So I hope you can benefit from the information I share. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, I'm about to go with the installation part of this timing belt job. Uh, this job is a little awkward and I had to have uh, some other things going on at the time. So I do want to make a note that you want to hang the power steering pump belt on before you put the bracket on for the uh, upper engine mount. Also, I want to uh, let you know to remove the brace under the oil pan before you torque down that uh, crank pulley bolt you don't want to put a bunch of pressure on that oil pan torquing that bolt down now's a good time to compare your old parts with your new parts here's that old idler bearing when I spin it I do hear a little slack in the bearing so in that case I would normally change it because I don't want that drying out on me within a hundred thousand miles here's a new bearing it's totally silent and it's a little bit tighter so I'm glad I'm, we're going with that here's a new water pump Asian whatever the company's called make sure those holes line up with the old one that came off and that it's got that seal in there some people do an extra precaution and put RTV in there or something I, I, I don't really you know support that because it's just going to be harder to get off next time but if the old pump wasn't uh leaking and i'm not planning on keeping the vehicle for 10 years another 5 10 years i might not replace that pump but it's a good thing to change if you can you want to take your timing belt stretch it out make sure that it looks like it's the same length of course your old belt may be stretched a little but this belt seems like it's the same length and heck if, if you don't have nothing else to do you can count teeth but uh you can see if your old belt had cracks in it this old belt actually looks like it's in good shape but man if you're going in after oil leak or something or ch changing your belt on its time go ahead and change it because if the belt breaks it normally jam damages the motor so i did my parts comparison and i'm gonna go back in i'm gonna stall my water pump first Okay, I got my water pump in place and on, cleaned off the surface, lubricated the seal with um, some coolant just to get it wet, and the water pump has some alignment pins on the back of it. So you start all five bolts by hand, get them aligned, and then I snug the bolts down one at a time. I started at the top, went to the bottom, went to the left, went to the right, back to the left. Then I snugged them down some more, and that pulled the pump in tight. Then I tightened the bolts in a star pattern as well, starting at the top, down to the bottom, then to the left, then to the right, and back to the left. Next thing I'm going to do is rinse the timing belt area down, and because you don't want the belt contaminated with anything. And then I'm going to install the idler roller and the tensioner roller. When you install the idler roller, make sure you put this part of the roller against the motor and the bolt sits in there on the other side otherwise you'll just tighten the roller down against the motor block and it won't be able to spin this way it allows it to spin freely because this part of the inner part of the roller is against the block right before I installed the tensioner the new tensioner roller I noticed that the hole here was larger than the hole in this one that was on the car so I got to fooling with it and figured out that there's a sleeve that goes into that tensioner. So you want to pull that sleeve out and get it installed in the, uh, in the new tensioner roller. The next thing I'm going to do is bolt the tensioner in uh, down there and then install the roller. Okay, I have the tensioner bolted in place. 10 millimeter bolt don't tighten it too tight because you don't want to strip the uh, threads inside the block maybe an aluminum block that you're bolting it into i 
Next thing I did was put the tensioner roller on. I tightened in that 14 millimeter bolt there. As you can see, the tensioner is still there with the bracket on there to keep tension off of it. It'll pivot and it'll turn. But when you put the belt on, it'll have slack until you pull that bracket. So leave that on. And when you put this on, make sure you put that metal sleeve off of the old one on the inside of the back of this one. That way it's not binding and it's set where it can pivot. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, put the timing belt around the uh, the path that it needs to go. I'm going to loop it down under the crank bolt there. Then I'm going to start out at this roller, at the tensioner roller. Then I'm going to go as snug as I can around this cam sprocket. Then I'm going to go under the water pump pulley. Then I'm going to go over this cam sprocket. Then I'm going to go past that idler sprocket. Trying to keep some tension on it at the whole time. Then I'm going to go under the uh, cam gear teeth. And then all my slack I, I plan to have at the uh, tensioner roller. Once I know that all the timing marks are lined up and the belt's in place, everything is seems to be in order and all the slack is over here by this roller, I'll pull that bracket off of the uh, tensioner and get the uh, slack out of the belt. And then I'll turn the motor over a few times manually to make sure that the belt doesn't jump and all of my... Uh, timing marks are still lined up. I'll turn that these cams over at least two revolutions which means the crank will probably go over four revolutions or so to make sure that I don't get any contact with any valves or pistons in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the belt. Okay I got the timing belt in place started at this upper sprocket over here then I went under the water pump under the water pump pulley there and then I tried to pull some slack out of the belt as I came up to this next sprocket and that back sprocket took a spin on me so I had to grab my uh, 17 millimeter bolt my, my 17 millimeter ratchet turn the mark back to where it's supposed to be and when I came under here again it spun on me again so I had to hold this sprocket with one hand, go under the water pump, and up over this sprocket, but I couldn't pull too tight. And the teeth fell into place on the belt, so that's good. Then I went down to the pulley, went down under the crank, and over to the tensioner pulley. So if you look here at the belt here, it's kind of tight. It's kind of tight there. It's kind of tight here. Then it's kind of tight here at this roller. Then it goes down to the crank. I don't know if I could show you that. But it's a little tight there. Not too tight, but it's a little taut, taut there. Then all of the slack is really over here. So I don't know if I could have got it any tighter. So I'm going to go down underneath and make sure... Those uh, teeth of the belt is around that crank pulley. And then I'm going to pull that bracket. Okay, I got my three cam marks lined up. Went on the back cam sprocket. Went on the front cam sprocket. And then one down here on the crank. Since I got those three marks lined up, I'm going to go ahead and pull that bracket off of there with a screwdriver and pry it off and let that tensioner put tension on that tensioner roller then I'm gonna turn the crank around three four times okay I pulled the bracket off of there and a little plunger came out here and put tension on the roller as you can see there's not that much slack in that belt now and when I turn it around it should tighten up a little more so I put the crank bolt in. I'm not going to put the pulley on until I crank it around a few times and see that the timing marks are still lined up. 
now that my timing belt's on, I put some extensions on the crank bolt so that I can go ahead and turn the motor around easily. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn the motor around. Four revolutions on this crank bolt, hopefully two revolutions on the cams to make sure it spins around without any uh, major resistance or any contact to the valves and the pistons. And I've already pulled that uh, tensioner bracket so that the tension is on the tensioner and there's no slack in the belt anywhere. Okay, I turned the crank around several times. As you can see, the mark is just about lined up perfect there. And then when I come up here, I got my timing mark lined up on the front cam sprocket and lined up on the second cam sprocket. It seems like I had to turn the crank around three times to get the uh, cam to turn around once. But I felt a little resistance from that motor compression and the belt seems to be nice and tight. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I can start it to check it. But I got to put oil in it since I drained the oil and I'm going to put coolant in it. And then I'm going to put the harmonic balancer on it and go ahead and fire it up. Before you put the lower timing belt cover on, you want to put this washer over the crank that goes on the motor first before you put the lower timing belt cover on. Okay, as you can see, I got that washer in place on the crank. Then I put the timing, lower timing cover on. It's kind of hard to get on because uh, it's kind of a tight fit, but you could work it on there from the bottom. Or you could get it on through the top if you hadn't already put the upper engine mount on. Now I'm going to put the screws in the timing belt cover. I believe there's seven of them from down here. Next thing I'm going to do is put the uh, lower motor mount bracket in place. These top two bolts uh, hold that water pump in place so I won't have any leaks. And then uh, you need to have all these bolts going through the bracket because if you place the bracket in place then try to set the bolts in that lower bolt won't go in. So that's just a little tip to help you cut loose some frustration so you don't go putting bolts in without all three of them in place. Okay, I got the upper motor mount bracket in place. Tighten down those 14 millimeter screws. There's three of them. The top two hold the water pump in. And if you look at this bracket, it actually stops that timing belt from jumping off track. So... My guess is you could probably crank this motor and make sure the motor fires up and, and works with this uh, after you pull that tensioner pin without all this other stuff on there. But, you know, I'm a little bit chicken. So I'm going to get down there and put the harmonic balancer crank pulley back on before I do that. So I got the bracket in place. All right, I got the timing belt covers bolt tightened down. They do shank out, so you don't have to tighten them too tight. Now I'm going to slide the crank pulley or harmonic balancer onto the shaft there and start to tighten it up. All right, I slid the uh, crank pulley on, tapped it lightly with a hammer. Now I'm going to go ahead and twist that bolt in hand tight or snug it down, and then I'm going to get the tool on it to uh, torque it down. Okay, I got the uh, power steering pump belt looped over the uh, upper engine mount bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this bracket down. Then I'm going to put on this front timing belt cover. Then the back timing belt cover. Then I'm going to install these belts and fill up the oil. Putting this motor mount in is a little tougher than I thought. I couldn't get all five holes lined up. So I went on ahead and uh, installed these first two bolts here, got them not tight but drawn down, and now I'm trying to line up these other holes here. As you can see, that hole's pretty far off. I got the back one kind of lined up, so I'm going to start the bolt there and then get something in there and pry this motor forward to line these other bolts holes up. Okay, I'm torquing down the crank bolt. As you can see, I got a, a wedge there on my half inch then it goes up to my tool then I have my large breaker bar on it and you put a torque wrench on it and torque it to whatever the torque specification is supposed to be 
I'm going to get under there and push on it with all my might. And that's all I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this front cover on. As you can see, hopefully it has a grommet seal there. Then it's got a slot around that part. That slot will fit over that cover. And the seal will seal on the part of the bracket there. Next thing I'm going to do is put this uh, front timing belt cover on on the front side of the engine. When I took all the timing belt covers off, there was uh, several bolts missing. These are the bolts that go in the timing belt cover. They have a shank on them and some threads, uh, built-in washer and everything. I went to the dealer. Those things were not in stock. They were $5.50 a piece. I wanted to go ahead and get the job done, so I went by Home Depot and I got these bolts and these washers. So these bolts are M6-1.0 times 20 millimeter. They're a little bit shorter than the OEM bolts. And then I got these uh, quarter inch washers to go on there. So this front cover will have this arrangement on there unless the owner replaces them. Okay, I got the front cover on. Don't tighten those bolts too tight because they don't have the shanks on them. Then I put the oil tube dipstick in and tightened it up. Now I'm going to put on the uh, front covers on there. Okay, I got the top cover on those four bolts. I'm going to put this lower cover on. And it had this little rubber bumper stop uh, right here. But the bracket has broken on it. So I'm going to set it there. And do what I can to uh, get the top cover to line up and mount on. I did get that piece of rubber to stay in place. Push the push pin through there. Push pin through there. And then tighten, uh, half turn those other two top screws on. Since I got everything in pretty good shape, I'm going to go ahead and put in the splash panel. And I got some new clips because several of them was missing. So I'm going to get that cowling that goes across the front under the bumper. And I'm going to get that secured. Okay, I got that thing clipped in place, four across the front. I got one here, one up there, one down under there, another one down under here. I'm not sure where this one goes. It was folded back. So, uh, gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I might tie that with some kind of a, a zip tie. And I don't know what I'm going to do with all this because a lot of this has been broken loose. I guess I'm just going to have to tear that off like that. Okay. So now that I got that straight, I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel on, jack the car up and lower it. I'm going to put some anti-seize on these threads and around this part of the wheel. Of course, the lug nuts hold the hubcap in place so I'm gonna make sure I get that hubcap on before I finish up the wheel install. Couldn't see nothing else that this should have hooked on to so I went on ahead and put a zip tie on it. Wrapped the zip tie around that little whatever that line is. Not putting a lot of pressure on there and it's plastic so it shouldn't do any harm there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel on. Okay I got the wheel on and the lugs are kind of finger tight so what you want to do is just Pull these, not tight, but snug against the wheel. And you want to go on a star pattern, and that helps you avoid warping your rotors. So you want to snug this one down, this one down, this one down, this one down, then this one down. And then you get the jack stand from under the car, lower the car till you put some weight on the wheel. Then you tighten them up in the same order in the star pattern uh, so that your wheel is nice and torqued down. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. Go ahead and subscribe to my page so you will get notification of future videos that I post. You can feel free to visit my website, robertspano.com, post questions, and thanks again for watching.